Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mario here once again, and I'm back for some more of the Mercy Toys videos. Yeah, you keep on hearing my voice every time ever since Super Mario Odyssey Let's Play so far. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more Let's Play of NES Remakes for the Nintendo Wii U eShop download. So last time we actually did tackle through the second half in Remakes 1 stages, in addition to playing through um, Pinball, and as you can see, we got ourselves our rainbow outlines on the actual screen right there. This means I've pretty much got every single perfect on that game. Which, kind of think about it, it's actually pretty easy to be honest, despite the fact that it, it, it took a quite a few attempts to able to get the rainbow stars on pinball, but that's just how it is for me. So, um, yeah, today for this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we're going to be moving on into the other two games, which are Golf and Cuckoo Land. And as you can see, we actually got ourselves our... Uh, the stamp from the likes of the last video is that we got a stamp based off from The Legend of Zelda's final boss, known as Ganon. So, even though no, that makes it pretty obvious as well before when um, Ganondorf exists, until when it gets to, um, you know, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and stuff like that. So, yeah, so let's get started with the forms of golf. I haven't really played that much on golf, to be honest, besides the, how the fact that the first ever golf game I've actually played in my entire life... And that was the forms of Mario Golf World, um, not World Tour, because that was on the 3DS. Um, Mario Golf Toad Store Tour, released for the GameCube in 2004 in Europe, and in 2003 and during the likes of North America. So even then, uh, that's the first ever golf game I've ever played. Where before when uh, Wii Sports comes in with the, um, the actual golf game on there. So that is how what I've managed to experience golf in general, so... I did also play a bit of mini golf, but that was a completely different story. So, um, as you can see right there, that um, golf that only has like um, seven stages, much like how it does it for Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. So, that makes it pretty obvious with this situation. So, per se, to able to actually deal with the marker. You know, the first stage is very simple because you have to get used to with the marker um, gauge. So. That's all you're really trying to do. The third and final section, on the other hand, is just that you need to get there on exactly at the circle center. Which, believe me, this might actually be not as easy as it sounds though, I'm gonna have to admit though right away. But even then, that's why we're gonna be getting to the more frustrating moments and during the later um, portions of NES Remakes, or in this case, you know, NES Remakes in general, as far as the actual franchise goes. Come on, hit the circle, thank you. It doesn't matter if I can hit it onto the banker or anything like that, because it also counts as the actual circle arena, so... There we go, we got ourselves a rainbow stars, which is quite surprising, and we got 306. Yeah, it's been a couple of days since we're actually coming back into this game, kind of thing about it, because of, um... Due to Kirby Marathon Let's Plays, we're just currently doing about. Specifically, actually, not to be more specifically for Kirby, um, Kirby's Adventure and stuff like that, that, uh, Mickey Mouse already finished that Let's Play not too well ago. But also, I was about to be starting through, um, you know, Super Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch. Alright, so in this particular challenge right there is the fact that we need to hit the green while using all different kinds of golf clubs. I think now pretty much does it from here. Nice attempt or two, but even then, though, sometimes I, um, manage to go really slow when it comes to changing those different golf clubs. I think that's the only perfect example of how the fact that I'm just going too slow on that part. So anyways, stage number three. Let's see how this stage plays out. And it's basically putting. So, yeah, let's go for putting then. Oh, that was a bad start, so I do apologize. I think, um... What they make the biggest prime example of how the fact that one thing I actually didn't like about this game though is the forms of how you need to be right on with the distance, which even then though that it might have sounds a little bit too easy at first, but actually I might as well actually just uh, um, lose a life here or lose a bit of health there because I've simply messed up to be able to attempt to go for the rainbow stars. You know, I can't help it for myself with rainbow stars, I'm gonna have to admit though right away, but even then though that just cannot help it. Okay, that should be going to go in. There you go. So that would guarantee me for actually giving me the rainbow stars, which, sure enough, I managed to accomplish that. And from here, we actually got ourselves the final counter lock, which informs of the bonus stages, which even then, you might be thinking that Remix 2 is going to be the final catalyzed, but in this case, a catalog of NES games we've got. 
but it turns out it was bonus instead. And it looks like we got ourselves a yet another NES game we've actually come across into, Urbian Champion. Which is more accurately something a little bit similar to where before Street of Rage comes into play for the Sega Mega Drive era. But except it's basically it's not side-scrolling stuff because we can just simply just beat the likes out of them, I'm presuming. Okay, so stage number four is basically we need to reach the green or in four strokes or less. Oh, this my sounds is not as easy as it looks. Okay. Oh, that was really awful. I think I should probably try that again. <sighs> You're probably wondering, uh, I'm not in a good mood at this point, folks. Um, you know what I mentioned it before, how bad the, dis the distance about this particular game is goes? That's more evident than in this particular, um, event alone. Because all you have to do in this particular, um... Well, obviously, you need to be able to reach the green within a lesser amount of strokes you can be able to purposely pull off with. But here's the problem with this. Um, it's really hard to able to judge the distance sometimes. Like, it's so dang difficult to able to actually do this in about a couple of attempts or so, which even then, though, that's the only thing I hate about that. But apart from that, though, um... It might not be too as awful as it used to be. Oh, I just missed that completely. That's a bit, that's a bit of a waste. But yeah, it did took me about 17, or actually 10 minutes to get past that first section in um, stage number 4. I mean, I cannot describe how the fact that I dreaded this particular... You know, it's really hard to tell to actually judge the distance when it comes to the swing and all that. I mean, when it gets to Mario Golf um, for the Nintendo 64, that... Um, at least judging the, um, the distance is actually way better, because you can actually see what's coming up up ahead. It's just a matter of the timing in Mario Golf. But in here, you need to be right on with the timing skills, and not to mention, just trying to able to judge the distance of where you're trying to hit the ball. Trying to able to actually, hopefully, God forbid, trying to get into the green and everything. But even then, that's just, that just feels a little bit too rushed out for my liking. Well, not so much rushed out, but it's just the fact that... Well, technical design choices or something like that, so... Stage number five, we're going back to putting again, but this time there's only two um, sections in one stage, so... Because all we have to do in this particular stage is that we need to, um... You know, get the golf ball into the hole within one stroke, and it's not as easy as it sounds as far as I've just noticed that. Oh, we're not doing- we're not in a good start in this episode, to be honest, because even then, that, that can get a lot of potentials here. Okay. Oh, that was way too hard right there, I do apologize for that. Uh, today was actually forms of the 6th of February, in the likes of 2018. Uh, during that time, and during the likes of yesterday or today, I recently picked up myself a yet another um, old set of um, retro games on the Wii Virtual Console games. Well, specifically on the Wii Shop channel. Um, the first game I've got it was is actually Ghost and Goblins for the NES, aka the most toughest um, Nintendo Entertainment System game we've ever got to come across. Because I've noticed right from the get go is that Ghost and Goblins was originally uh, released in the arcade machines, which luckily it did manage to did release that by the way on the Wii. Uh, Wii Shop channel by any means, but even then, now let's just say the NES version of um, Ghost and Goblins is going to be a little bit more difficult, as you expect it, because even then, now that, well, I'll get to more topics if I manage to play those particular harder games like this, but even then, let's go ahead and move on to um, stage number six, and I believe in stage number six is basically we need to reach the goal within just one stroke with one shot. That's all you're really trying to do. Uh, the next game I did picked up, on the forms of actually download, downloading those stuff, uh, now the forms of Punch-Out for the NES. Now you're probably thinking, I've already got the uh, Super Punch-Out, but that was the forms of the Super Nintendo Classics Mini, of all things. That could be the same applies for Super Ghouls and Ghosts, from the, uh, the Super Nintendo Classics Mini, from this little department there. And, um... Because I would like to be able to try out every single Punch-Out game, but even then, uh, that means it includes the Wii version of Punch-Out. But even then, I might be curious to try those out eventually, so... And, uh, another game I actually did download, and that was the forms of the Earthworm Gym 1 and 2, both on the Mega Drive. Because of that, though, I've heard there are some, um, um, reviews out there, specifically the PlayStation version of Earthworm Gym 2, 
actually consider getting as a lower rating compared to how it does it in a, um, the Sega Mega Drive version. I don't know what it is for me though, but even then, we'll definitely have to talk, talk things through. But for right now, we got 321 stars, and we actually got... Damn! Are you kidding me? One point for that next stamp. Oh, Jesus Christ. But anyways, uh, that was the most embarrassment for the likes of, like, one point off by getting the next stamp. But after we come across into the last stage in golf, hit the ball into the hole with one stroke. Which means that you have to actually achieve, um, hole in one. So... I, I just get the feeling that I might as well not get this in time, but even then, it will take me about plenty of tries to do that. I just getting I just get a feeling for that because obviously, if I made several of mistakes, then I have to keep on just you know jump cutting all the way through, which again is not as easy as it sounds, though you know. Okay. I think it'll just always cause me sending me to the water hazard every time. Which sounds a little bit of a waste. Okay, come on. Oh, that was way off there. Still in a water hazard. I could assume this is more likely based off from um, hole 15, if I could recall that. Oh, let's see if I can do this. No, nope, I still failed, so I'll meet you guys back. Alright, I gotta figure this out though, because all you have to do in this particular challenge here is to be able to hit the blue area just right. But you need to actually put a yet another arrow um, cursor all the way to the other side of the actual blue bar. And yeah, this is not as easy though. Because you need to be right on with the uh, the distance and plus the timing skills you have to deal with. Oh jeez. No matter what though folks, I'm gonna have to be brutally honest here. I'm suck at this particular game. Well, not the NES Remix as a whole, no, because even then... Just golf in general, in this particular variation of golf, I'm pretty much suck at it. Which that makes me the prime example of how the fact that back in 2013, that I was a bit too skeptical to actually able to purchase some um, NES remakes, or especially doing a Let's Play of NES remakes, because of golf is gonna give is gonna give me a hard time. But there we go, folks. That concludes golf. So there we go. We now got ourselves the Rainbow Stars ranking. So that's good to know. But even then, now, let's just go and say right now that we finally got ourselves a next stamp, which I'm assuming the next stamp we actually got is actually based off from this man with the tennis racket. So there we go, that concludes golf. So even then, now, that, um, so far we actually gone through the halfway points of the Rainbow Star Rankings Department, so means is that, um, every single even number-based stages are non-Rainbow Star ru runs, so only the odd number ones specifically, though. Anyway, so now we're done with golf, so now let's move on to Cuckoo Land. Oh yeah, kind of think about it, um... Golf did manage to release in 1984, around the same year as, um... Well, Cuckoo Land, Excite Bike, and Blue Fight, and Ice Climber especially. So even then, uh, I haven't pointed things out for that point. And I believe, uh, I might be, um... A little bit optimistic about this, but even then... Um, I haven't mentioned about the, the release date of the pinball game. Um, that game did came out in 1983, so even then, uh, that came out on exactly the same year? Or maybe this might be the only game to be released on 1983. So, at least as far as I'm concerned with that, so... Yeah, that's why I can comfort, but anyway, let's get this started. Oh, actually, it came out the exact same year as Mario Bros. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Anyways, in Cuckoo Land, um, didn't have that much experience on Cuckoo Land, honestly, because... Well, first off, I haven't really, um, got the NES back in the day, and plus, as a result, I have no idea how this works, because all you have to do, well, as far as I've noticed, is that we need to able, the goal in this particular actual game of Cuckoo Land, is that we need to complete the pattern before we move on to the next stage, so, I think that's how you're able to deal with the gimmick in this game, so, let's just see how this goes, and I've, as far as I've noticed, that the control scheme in this particular game is so, so weird. Like, you can definitely tell until maybe we get to the latest portion of these Sony stages, like even then. Although, kind of thing about it though is that um, this game only has 8 stages, quite frankly though, because even then though, that because of how you need to gain used to with the controls and all that, so even then though, it might take you a lot of practice if you have a first time playing Cuckoo Land before that. So, 
I think, kind of think about it, the first ever, um, um, the first ever time I've ever experienced with Cuckoo Land, actually. And I was the forms I've ever experienced the main, and um, protagonist of that game. I actually get a description for it, injuring the likes of, um, Super Smash Bros. Melee Trophy. Which that makes it actually represents from it, though, so... Anyway, so this particular mission here is to stun those two enemies by the forms of the only ability that Cuckoo can actually do. And that's the forms of the electric shock ability, which even then, this way he can able to stun enemies or even essentially just kill enemies while simply just able to drag them into the wall. Which even then, though, it might be sounds a little bit easy for you, but it's not as easy as it sounds to, to be honest, because even then, um, I've heard from some reviews of this game actually by the forms of IGN Entertainment. Um, actually did manage to give this game, like, a 5 out of 10, because even then, uh, what I found is a little bit odd about that review score is probably because of how the fact that, well, he just thinks that, um, uh, the graphics might be a little bit okay, and the presentation looks okay at best, well, I wouldn't say that much if I were you, and plus of how clunky this game can feel like, especially with controls and stuff. Because you have to use the directional pad, depends on what, um, Kukul, um, Kukul's position is gonna be at, um, it all depends on how the fact that of uh, which way he was going, and you have to press that corresponding button until you're able to actually go to the one um, um, section to the next. Which even then though, it might be again a little bit easy, but it's so too clunky, and plus it makes my controls a little bit reversed. But anyways, we unlocked bonus stage number three, so that's awesome for me. And I believe we got ourselves a yet another NES game we've got, and that is baseball. The most popular sport in the United States of America. Which is might be um, a little bit more possible for a thing about it, because you remember back in um, last year that me and Luigi did manage to tackle through uh, Mario Super Slockers not too long well ago. Well, specifically last year specifically, that me and Luigi did manage to finish that Let's Play of Mario Super Slockers not too long well ago, as I mentioned earlier. But anyway, um, in this challenge right there, all we have to do is just basically we need to collect those collectible items, like, um, the fruits that we've got, and as well as these flags. This game kind of reminds me of, like, Pac-Man for a little bit. Except the fact that, uh, we have to deal with the most awkward controls in ever in any other NES games we're actually gonna go come across in two. Because I don't have any issues with Pac-Man at all, because it plays almost exactly like the arcade version. But in this particular game, that you have to deal with the most awkward um, you know, awkward controls as much as possible, though. I mean, that's the only thing that makes this game a little bit more tougher compared to, um... You know, Pac-Man, as far as I'm aware. So yeah, that's all I can really do for this particular, um, task at hand, is that we need to basically grab every single item, as far as you may see on screen, to be able to do some specific, um, effect. Like, for instance, I managed to grab the timer, which actually frees the actual enemies in during time. And that way, I can able to stun enemies easily, and, and I can able to, um, well, basically just able to defeat them too. Okay, stage number four is the fact that we need to able to collect 40 gold bars. It doesn't feel like it's gold bars and everything, it's just all in blue. Although, I can't think about it though, it, I think this is actually based off from the bonus stage in Cool Cool Lands, uh, naturally though. So let's see if how we can get ourselves the last few, there we go. So let's see what time I've got. 20 seconds, that's awesome. You gotta be kidding me. I don't know what, how much um, time I've actually wasted upon that stage. Oh, there goes the three star rankings on that run through. I might as well come back for that and, um, at the very end of the episode at least. Let's try stage five. Just complete the pattern. Okay, that's all you're really trying to do. It's stage number five as a result. Oh boy. I know how much of a fact that we actually gone for this game really, really fast. I know originally that Sonic was supposed to be coming back into Kingdom Hearts Final Mix eventually, but, um, um, the only downside about this, though, is the fact that we just keep on getting onto this, um, current progression of some of these Let's Plays from time to time. For mainly this game, for instance, well, for NES Remix anyway. Oh, that was really stupid. And I've literally got one life left. That's the only, um, little bit of a nitpicking I have with this. Okay, I think I might as well get this thing going, come on. The yeah, kind of thing about it though is that we need to able to actually just to create another half of the heart. Well, it's kind of reminds me like Kingdom Hearts, except it's an 8-bit. And plus it's made out of um, gems as well, so anyway. Oh jeez, these controls, these controls are so awkward to deal with. 
I know it's off score for this point, folks, but it's just that you need to, um, in order to actually get to the, uh, one corresponding, um, direction, you need to put up with this opposite direction as possible, which even then, though, that might be because of, uh, reversible controls, or even especially noticeable, a lot of frustration. So, yeah, there goes a yet another three-star run of this particular game. Well, that was a bit of embarrassment, to say the much for that. Stage number six, and I do apologize for the jump cut right there because, oh my god, controls are so frustrating to get used to with. Especially when it gets to, um, um, whatever when we get to the later stages in Cool Cool Land, I just realized that in the beginning part of these, um, few st the first few set of stages, starts off really slowly, but when we get to the later stages, it gets ridiculously fast, and even then, it makes it incredibly impossible to be able to, just to control yourself, you know? Until this section. Well, not this section, because it's pretty easy, but this section alone. Look how fast Cuckoo is. And even then, believe me, it's nice, easy to control this thing, because even then, you have to put up with these little... And, oh yeah, not to mention, as you can see right there, we actually come across into those really well-placed, invisible, well, springboards and stuff like that, which, um, that makes you more likely, um, kind of think about it though, it kind of more, it's more likely a reference to the likes of, uh, one of those special attacks for Pac-Man in Super Smash Bros. 4, when if you're trying to pull, uh, pull off the up special attack, and that way you can able to do a bungee jump and everything like that to give you back safety from the actual stage. It does remind me of that technique. But in this game in particular, they always come out of nowhere, and plus as a result, to make matters worse, is that they'll try to able to actually uh, make you, force you to go to the opposite direction as possible. So even then, this is really tough though. Really toughest game in, this, in the entirety of the NES game so far. Okay, so I believe the last, um, check, uh, completing the pattern, um, stage is that- is how the fact that we can actually create the glasses, which I just realized about something, because even then, though, that we have to deal with those two ends here. Oh, god. This is- this is kind of disorientating sometimes, and plus you might see- you might as well see right here, sometimes it gets like a seizure vision right over there, but just because of how the fact that how the emulation of the NES games work out. But still, it can be a little bit disorientating at times, especially with controls. But anyway... Another bonus stage we've got, and I believe that's based off from Donkey Kong yet again. But that could be for something else. But even then, uh, well, we're probably not gonna get into that before we're able to complete... Remix 2 set of stages first. Alright, so in this particular mission right there is to defeat four enemies. That's all you're really trying to do. So, by simply just able to actually just, you know, stun those enemies as always. And, um, after we've done that, then... I'm not sure what I expected. I'm kind of assuming... Oh, that was totally my fault. Uh, what I meant to do right here is the fact that I need to wait until the enemies respawn. Which, sometimes it might take a little bit of a while to able to let these enemies respawn like this. But, still, I just can't help it for myself for my speedrun tactics. And there goes my, uh, first run through on this particular mission. But hopefully I won't be mad at too much for this point, folks, because obviously that we still got a long way to go for this point, folks, until we get to the, um, well, naturally that we actually just managed to, um, get almost towards the end of Cuckoo Land, but even now that's as far as I can really go for this point. Oh yeah, aside from all that, um, the virtual console games I've already mentioned about this, for the likes of, let me restart this, um, but in forms of, um, you know, I've already got Ghosts and Goblins, Punch-Out, and especially the, um, well, specifically Earthworm Jim 1 and 2. And I've also managed to download it ourselves, but in forms of, um, Super Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, and Super Star Wars The Return of the Jedi. Just because of how the fact that, at this point, is that the every single Super Nintendo games always attempt to have the most expensive cartridges that, when it comes to price, uh, range and all that stuff. But even then, uh, I've now finally obtained the Super Star Wars Trilogy. See, even then, uh, that specifically on the Nintendo Wii's virtual console version. So, yeah, with that being said, that I'm pretty much uh, done with um, so many Super Nintendo games, at the moment at least. But normally there are still more that I could potentially try to get through, but um, mainly in the future time when it gets to Nintendo Wii U um, eShop at this point. Well, nothing matters anyway, because we've pretty much got 
Um, the majority of the Super Nintendo games at this point, for all in digital, or in this case just built in, into the actual, you know, Super Nintendo Classics Mini system. So, anyways, 8th and final stage, here we go. I wonder how this stage will gonna be turned out to be, but I'm considering it's probably because we need to deal with the exactly the same objectives just to complete the pattern, so... Obviously it's, gonna be, obviously, it's gonna be much more difficult than last time, just because of how the fact that we need to deal with uh, cheap enemy placements and all that stuff sometimes in this game. And uh, that's all I could really come across into at this point in time, folks. And I've missed out just only one um, gem left. So, there we go. We have accomplished that. And now we need to uh, create a tree pattern. So... Yeah, as you can see, everything else is going way too fast here, so it might be at times that it might be really impossible to control, but still, it's it's so dang difficult to control this thing sometimes, even you might easily lose control of yourself. I'm not sure it's because of how the fact that, um, you know how the fact that with the, um, the weird directional pad controls are in this game? It just makes it incredibly difficult to turn yourself from all over the place. And that's why we actually got ourselves none of those rainbow stars in this game at all. Unlike how it does it in the golf game, that we did manage to get ourselves just only, um... Uh, four rainbow stars run through, but, um... Not so much for Cuckoo Land, I'm afraid. That's only because of how this really... It's so odd to able to actually just to get used to with these controls, especially when Cuckoo, um... Cloco is going way too fast here, which... That makes me reminds him, uh, that reminds me of something. The how the fact that it kind of reminds me like a Mark Speed section from Sonic 06 sometimes. But anyways. Come on, let's see if we can get this last panel. Hopefully I won't touch the hole right there. Well, I was hoping I can able to... Oh, there we go. Oh, that works. Oh, huh, I'll definitely take it then. And here's the last section in the, um, Cool Cool Lands 8th stage. Ah, oh, not to mention what those invisible spring traps that always bumps into one another. Or in this case, uh, the really, really darn well-placed, um, invisible trampolines every time. Oh, I don't know if this is not gonna be as easy, nope. So yeah, we have to basically make an H, so that makes it pretty obvious with the, how this objective goes, so... Let's see how this will turn out, come on, almost there, and... There we go. Whew! We've now accomplished that. Let's just hope if we get ourselves three stars on this run. At least, unlike how it does in the other two stages, that I haven't exactly gone through those three stars yet. Which, speaking of such, um... Yeah, I guess I'll just able to actually, just to say right now, I'll eventually cut those footage up before I'm able to do a successful attempt on those three star rankings on those last two stages. Alright, so in stage 4 right there, that when it comes to getting the 3-star rankings, yeah, I did manage to done the, um, uh, the slightly alteration of the very end of the each episode. Um, I might as well have to talk through those, um, specific topics on those particular, uh, 3-star rankings objective-wise we've accomplished within. Oh yeah, um, there's actually one last game that we've got from the likes of the Nintendo Wii's Virtual Console version. Actually, I'll get into more details on that, but now let's move on to the final stage with 3 stars. Okay then, so as I was saying, um, the final, um, oh in this case, the last, uh, virtual console game that I've managed to download it onto the actual white Wii console, now see forms of F-Zero. Now you guys are probably thinking that we've already got F-Zero from the likes of, um, the Super Nintendo Classics Mini, and because of that though, because, uh, we also managed to get ourselves F-Zero X for the Nintendo 64, so the only games that needs left now is basically GX. AKA the most toughest racing games on the Nintendo GameCube. Oh boy, if I was gonna be getting hands on that game, we don't know exactly for sure yet. But anyways, that concludes Cool Cool Lands. So, yeah, that's how it goes though, hey? So, yeah, that's kind of frustrating, especially with the controls in this particular game. It feels a little bit too, way too complicated. So anyways, I'm going to have to end things off for this point, folks. So tune me next time on Let's Play NES Remakes. It's the fact that we're going to be moving on into the next bunch of games we're going to be running to. Now see forms of Ice Climber and Wrecking Crew possibility. See, for then though, after those two, then we're pretty much going to be moving on to the big one, which is The Legend of Zelda, so don't worry, we'll get to that. So see you guys next time. Later, fellas.